Kansas, gateway to Oz. Under the rainbow, this is where it was. Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes, and churned homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. It's the best part of Dorothy's dream. Today on Around Kansas, join us for a story about March winds. Then join us for a story about meadowlarks and their presence across the state. And we'll learn about the history of bumper stickers. And we'll end with a look at Mike Matson and his book, Splificated. Stay with us. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Well, hello again. It's Wednesday, and I'm Frank, and this is the TV program called Around Kansas, which has to do with people, places, and things that make Kansas a great place to live, work, play, and visit. Um, let's see, we're uh, nearing kind of the semi-end of March, uh, and so then we get into April and April showers and springtime and the whole thing. So this is the uh, 21st, and it is the first day of spring, the uh, vernal equinox. So anyway, that's about all that's happening today, so I'll see you later. No, actually... Um, Gosh, we've, we've had quite an eventful march, of course, with, uh, with daylight savings, which I'm sure you're enjoying now because the weather's getting nicer and you get to stay outside longer in the evening. And we had St. Patrick's Day, which fell on a Saturday this year, which made that a whole lot more fun because you had, didn't have to sneak out of work unless, of course, you work on Saturday. So here we are. We're uh, into another week of the, the month of March and heading on into April. Uh, there are a lot of things during the springtime that you, you probably want to discover. And that is, I'll remind you again, that it will be tulip time again here in Topeka. There will be literally thousands and thousands of tulips. And they'll be at uh, the Ward Mead Park and also out at Lake Shawnee at the Ted Ensley Gardens. Now this all started several years ago when a guy by the name of Gerald Binkley used to plant thousands of, of uh, tulips in his yard. And he started inviting people to come by and take a look at the tulips. Well, it got to the place where there were so many people coming, it's like, hold it, this has got to be in a bigger place. And so uh, it really did move to Lake Shawnee at the time. And then, of course, it was uh, added on to Ward Mead Park. It's a beautiful thing to see. And so when you start hearing about tulip days in Topeka, Kansas, if you don't live here, we'll come in anyway, because it really is worth the trip. If you've never been to Ensley Gardens at uh, Lake Shawnee, it really is a crown jewel for Topeka. It's a beautiful, beautiful lake and park around it. Uh, it, it there's, there's a walking trail and of course there's the park and there's all kinds of places for kids to play. And if you're a fisherman, it's a wonderful place to fish too. So anyway, today we have some stories about March winds. Isn't that always interesting? And then we're going to talk about bumper stickers. And I'm sure we're going to see a lot of bumper stickers coming up this year. It being, of course, an election year. Uh, and then we're going uh, we're gonna to talk about a book by Mike Matson, And so that's going to be an interesting story as well. So, again, we've got some great stories this week as always. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Tarwater Farm and Home has been family owned and operated since its beginning in 1978. What you need for farm and agriculture, lawn and garden, clothing and footwear, and so much more. You'll be surprised at what you'll find in this huge store. They have what you need and lots of it. So come take a look. 
you'll discover that customer service is first and foremost. Always has been with the Tarwaters. Tarwater Farm and Home, 4107 North Topeka Boulevard. What if U.S. soybean meal were more than a commodity? If seed companies and the soybean checkoff built a better variety? That future is here. The time is now. To meet end-user demands, the Soybean Checkoff is investing in the compositional quality of soybeans, including meal. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. The March wind screams around us like a keening banshee. It wails through the night and shoves the sun toward the horizon in the morning. It seemingly scatters the stars. The dust in the barnyard obscures the horses and even the cats scurry to hide. It is obvious why March was named for the Roman god of war. Nature is at war with itself. Heating, cooling, air, earth, and water None is yet in sync as spring is rested from the grasp of winter. The March wind blows rain, snow, and petals of flowers brave enough to burst through one of the warm spells. Nothing is spared the wind's wrath. On the high plains, roads are closed. It is safer than risking a semis flipping over. Even hardened ranchers accustomed to the extremes of weather put off chores to another day in the face of the March wind. Horses become nervous. Their nostrils flare, their ears are pointed, they become jumpy. The cows simply hunker down, clinging to the pasture to keep from blowing into the fence. They dig in their hooves. The red-tailed hawk is suspended, trying as he might to fly to another field. He eventually gives up, turns, and is swept away. March wind is like the stern schoolmaster hovering above your desk. You will change, you will, I will make you change. Yes, the March wind changes everything in its path. It rearranges the landscape. Bent, broken, rearranged. It is an endurance test, challenging us to prove we deserve to see spring. It is the ultimate spring cleaning, sweeping every loose thing from sight. If your house is not pulled from its foundation, I promise the world will look very different in the morning. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. I had this horse, it was a good horse, except when the wind was blowing above 30 mile an hour. Wind was blowing about 35, 40, and I saddled him up, rode him out to the end of the lane, and I thought, well, he's doing pretty good. And about six jumps later, I was laying on the ground, and thinking, boy, my shoulders sure hurt. I kept waiting and it, it didn't get better. And so I went to an orthopedic surgeon and that showed that I had torn rotator cuff. And said, well, I have to do surgery. I, I farm and ranch by myself. It's not gonna work out very well. I'd been sleeping in my recliner for about two and a half years because it hurt too much to sleep in bed on my side. And I'd heard about Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center on the radio. Got down there at eight o'clock in the morning and by 11.30 the procedure was all over. They just took some fat out of my side here and spun that down for about 45 minutes and then injected it in my shoulders and I was on my way. It's something you don't hear about but I thought it was worth a try and I'm really pleased. It's, it's really worked out well for me. Fort Wallace was the fightingest fort in the West. Fossils, Indians, soldiers, scouts, wagons, trails, pioneers, stories. Discover the story of Fort Wallace and the people who served here, the people who fought here, the people who settled here. Wallace County, where the past is present. 
Buffalo Bill Cody earned his legendary title in Oakley. Bring the family and come celebrate Oakley's pioneering history and unique geography at two sites, the Buffalo Bill Cultural Center and the Fick Fossil Museum. Cody's statue marks his achievements and welcomes visitors to the Cultural Center. The Fick Fossil Museum houses world-class fossils and artifacts. You'll find Oakley at the hub of U.S. Highways 83 and 40 and I-70. Stop for the legend. Stay for the day. Discover Oakley. This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. The western meadowlark was designated the official state bird of Kansas in 1937. A familiar songbird of open country across the western two-thirds of the continent, the meadowlark is in the same family as blackbirds and orioles. Adults have a black and white striped head, long pointed bill, yellow cheeks, bright yellow throat, and a distinctive black V on the breast. The western meadowlark is often seen perched on fence posts in grasslands and agricultural areas, singing its distinct seven-note melody. Their flute light song usually ends with three descending notes. Male western meadowlarks have a complex two-phase primary song that begins one to six pure whistles and descends into a series of one to five gurgling warbles. Males develop a repertoire of up to a dozen songs and may switch the songs they sing in response to an intruder. When chasing compete, uh, competing males or responsive females, male western meadowlarks give a hurried, excited flight song of short space whistles and warbles. Although western meadowlarks seldom sing more than 10 to 12 songs, their eastern counterparts exhibit a much larger repertoire of 50 to 100 song variations. Western meadowlarks forage on the ground and beneath soil for insects, grain, and weed seeds. It's estimated that at least 65 to 70 percent of their diet consists of beetles, cutworms, caterpillars, grasshoppers, spiders, sowbugs, and snails. They also nest on the ground, constructing a cup of dried grasses and bark. This nest may be open or have a partial or full grass roof, or even a grass entry tunnel several feet long. Western meadowlark predators include hawks, crows, skunks, coyotes, raccoons, and weasels. Western meadowlarks are still abundant, but declining throughout their range. They are protected, non-game species. This segment brought to you by the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center in Oakley. Welcome to Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center. Right here in Oakley, Kansas on I-70 at exit 76. I-70, after all, is America's Main Street, and we're right here on Main Street for you. Now that I'm an Oakley resident, I still come in almost every day, and I sit and listen to the conversations of the people around me. You know, the guys who are talking about the big elk they just bagged, or the folks who are taking their kid to college for the first time. People just traveling up and down the highway. Real people, just like you and me and they find just what I find here, real people to serve them. There's history, there's scenery. We hope you'll stop and see us soon. Welcome to Oakley. I'm Scott Thelman, and this is Juniper Hill Farms. Even though my parents weren't farmers, they bought this beautiful farm north of Lawrence in 1999. In 2010, I started growing vegetables on this land. Today, Juniper Hill Farms sells produce to wholesalers, grocers, and restaurants, and is focused on growing high-quality food that everyone can afford. Watch my story and the stories of other young Kansas food producers at kansaslivingmagazine.com slash meetafarmer. Hi, I'm Randy. And I'm Paul from PFI. We would like to personally invite you to stop by PFI, home of Boot Daddies. PFI is America's Western store, covering over 50,000 square feet. Over 25,000 boots. Visit Saddle City with the largest selection of saddles and tack anywhere. A huge selection of hats at Big Spur Hat Company in PFI Town. And choose from the best brands of clothing and accessories for the entire family. PFI, located on Highway 65 at the Battlefield exit in Springfield. And I'm not kidding. My name is Bill Meredith, and I uh, farm about 7,000 acres. We raise about 150 head of Longhorn cattle. 
it was real frustrating for me to not be able to be, have my hands on it. When I'd come down in the morning, I'd almost cry because my back was hurting so bad and my memory is so bad. And had been to Mayo's Clinic uh, feeling like it was not nothing was happening as fast as I'd like to see it happen. My land guy come and pull up beside me and he asked me how I was doing. I told him I wasn't doing orthodern. He was telling me about this treatment they were doing down there in Manhattan. Anyway, we come up here and got this treatment, put some in my shoulders because I couldn't bend my head like this. I finally uh, started to get my uh, memory back and I'm able to do about everything I was doing before, maybe more. I, I went outside and raised my hand and praised the Lord, you know. This segment brought to you by Kansas Grain Sorghum, growers working together. Find out more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Before bumper stickers, how did we know whose kid was an honor student or that you were saving the whales? Once again, a Kansan answers the call by transforming the lowly bumper into a platform for freedom of speech. Forrest P. Gill, a silk screen printer from Kansas City, Kansas, USA, is the acknowledged inventor or perhaps the developer of the bumper sticker. Gill recognized that the self-adhesive paper used during the Second World War could be used to advertise promotional products in the late 1940s and beyond. Gill was relying on developments in material manufacturing during World War II, which led to the widespread use of daylight fluorescent inks. These inks appeared to glow during the daytime and were useful to support various wartime activities. They were favored by early bumper sticker manufacturers after the war. In addition, the first commercially produced pressure-sensitive stickers appeared after World War II. New developments in adhesive materials led to the production of paper strips with adhesive on the back. In addition, the rise of consumer use of vinyl after World War II led to the eventual use of this material in bumper stickers. But before bumper stickers, Advertisers used other methods of displaying their wares. In the horse-drawn carriage era, advertisers printed on horsefly nets with the name of a business. In the 1930s and 1940s, bumper signs were printed on metal or cardboard and wired to the chrome bumpers. Lester Dill, promoter of Merrimack Caverns in Missouri, was an ardent adopter of the bumper sign to attract motorists to his site. Using a windshield decal was another option. These paper strips could be wetted and placed inside a car window. However, these strips did not hold up well when placed on a bumper. Early widespread uses of the advertising bumper sticker were for tourist attractions such as Marine Gardens, Florida, Seven Falls, Colorado, Merrimack Caverns in Missouri, and Lookout Mountain, Tennessee. Another popular advertisement was the Sea Rock City sticker. In the 1940s and 50s, visitors to the site had a sticker applied to their car which duplicated the famous signs painted on the roofs of barns throughout the southeastern United States. Tourist attraction staff would circulate through the parking lot applying the promotional sticker to every car. The first documented presidential election that used adhesive bumper stickers in political campaigns was the 1952 election between Dwight D. Eisenhower and Adlai Stevenson II. Welcome to our bar B, 8,000 plus square feet western store with something for everyone in the family. We have boots, belts, hats, jeans, anything you could want to outfit you and your horse. Come visit our line of saddles. We have 400 plus new and used saddles in stock. We offer tack, grooming supplies, head stalls, breast collars, you name it, we've got it for you and your horse. That's our bar B, one mile east of Highway 4 on Northeast 39th. Our bar B, where western is a way of life. This is one of my favorite bits that I make. The name I give this bit is a derby bit. I had a roan head horse that was running through the bridle with the chain bit, and I made this bit here. It, it, it really worked good on that horse. I sent this bit to Donnie McNeese, who breaks in cattle for Jeff Smith and Ike's Cox. And I said, ride this bit on a lot of horses, see how you get along with it. They did. He said, bull, that's really a good bit. Fits a lot of horses. Then I give this bit to my good friend, Brent Wright, who I'll make bits for. And I said, 
see how this bit will work on a reining horse. I call him up a couple months later. I said, Brent, how you get along with that bit? And he said, good. He said, you don't need it right this minute, do you? And I said, no. He said, good, because I'm down here in Texas and I just won a big fraternity riding that bit. And when Brent got home, he gave me the buckle that he won the fraternity with. I'm, I'm really proud of that buckle that Brent Wright gave it to me and also that he got along so good with my bit. Welcome to the Jerry Thomas Gallery and Collection, where we showcase my renowned frontier military and Native American artifacts. Behind me you see a touch of fall. We put together not only the beauty of Micah high walking, who is the first graduate of West Point of the Northern Cheyenne people and a dear friend, but also a Hudson's Bay blanket that I have here in the gallery. The unique opportunity that I was able to have was we unveiled this painting and surprised Micah at Custer Battlefield, a true honor. Surecrop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yeah, we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. Been brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. There is a cautionary tale about climbing the family tree. You might not like the people you find there. In Mike Matson's case, he was fairly certain it wasn't going to be pretty, but he has the soul of a reporter and the need to know won over the possible pain. We can all be grateful for the risk he took. The seed for Spifflicated was planted during three years of purposeful conversations between Mike and his father. His father saw the end of his life approaching and wanted to download some data about his childhood. The essence of those visits is something Mike had long suspected. Both his father's parents were alcoholics. Mike has dealt with his own demons. 25 years sober, he has spent some time thinking about the tendency to become an alcoholic, the factors that may be inherited, the factors that may be the resulting of adapting to a situation. His grandparents are fascinating, colorful, dysfunctional people. Mike's memoir follows their lives over the 25-year period from 1931 to 1956. The conversations with his father rekindled Matson's erstwhile inner journalist. He did the research, dug up the facts, and interviewed those with active memories of his father's parents. This allowed him to hang some truth on his suspicions and construct an accurate timeline of their lives. It is no ordinary timeline. A houseboat honeymoon down the Mississippi River from St. Paul to New Orleans in the heart of the Great Depression, a cross-country motorcycle adventure on the front line of FDR's New Deal projects, evacuation from Alaska in the weeks after Pearl Harbor, his grandmother's Rosie the Riveter experience, life in the foothills of the Cascades, a move to Kansas, and the largest producing oil field in North America. This volume is characterized as creative nonfiction. The writing is superb, and the story is tragic and riveting. Mike's willingness to share it so honestly and compassionately is the triumph over all those sad and lost moments his father and grandparents experienced. Throughout a career in journalism, politics, government, and advocacy, Mike has written many words over a host of media. Spifflicated is his first actual book. Today, he manages messages, systems, and expectations. He lives where he was born in Manhattan, Kansas, with his wife, Jackie. Again, we've got some great stories this week, as always, so 
Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Closed captioning brought to you by Egg Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at eggpromosource.com. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. We're the best part. 